What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, back with another big interview, man. And we got a two-time CAA All-American, absolutely dominated this season, up in, in at the University of Albany at, at the running back position. We have Carl Mofor coming in with us for this interview, man. And, you know, tell the people a little bit about yourself, man. I appreciate you having, have, having you on here. No, thank you for inviting me to be on the show. Um, for everybody that doesn't know, my name is Carl Mofor. Um, I'm from PG County, Maryland. And I play run right for you, Albany, number 21. Yeah, so just coming out of high school, um, I came from to Albany in my senior year, before my senior year of high school started, just to, like, secure the scholarship spot, you know, how stuff goes. I just wanted to lock some in. And then throughout my recruiting, um, I got about, like, 10 offers from schools in the CAA. Like, new UNH had offered me, and I had several offers from other schools, like Morgan State, Holy Cross. And I just felt like Albany was the right fit for me. They were the coaching staff who, like, treated me the most like a priority to them. And it just felt like a home atmosphere when I did my two official, unofficial visits and then on my official visit. It was a great experience. Got to meet some of the players and see how everything was done there. It was a school that really stuck with me, and I liked it. Yeah, and, I mean, man, you dominated in high school. I mean, named to the Under Armour Elite 100 out of Maryland, and I believe you were the team captain for three straight years on your team or the t team MVP coming out of high school as well, over 4,000 yards, 56 touchdowns. So we knew you were going to be an instant contributor. But if a, if one of these younger players came and asked you, what, what would you say are the keys to starting as a true freshman as you started eight games at Albany your freshman year? Uh, my key is to start as a true freshman and just work as hard as possible and just learn your playbook because that's a hard worker who knows what they're doing. It's hard to keep off the field. So just go 110% at every drill, workout, practice, play, and just know what you have to do. The game is mainly, is mainly mental. Like physical is a part of it, but the game is mainly mental. Everybody here at this level is going to have some sort of talent. It's just a, if they can even use that talent effectively. So. That's my main key. Yeah, and I mean, so looking back, how different was the was the offense that you ran in high school different from what you were running at Albany? Was it a big adjustment, or was the offense pretty similar? <laughs> and, uh, I came from a triple triple option offense in high school, so it was a lot of running from the fullback position, and I played slot uh, my sophomore and freshman year, so I learned how to like catch a little bit more and block on the perimeter. So, but that was mainly down the hill running. We had a couple of passes, but triple option, not, you don't really need to pass the ball too much. So it was a big, big shift going into a spread offense that the running back has to catch the ball out the backfield, has to be able to block, run between the tackles and outside the tackles. So it was a little adjustment that I went through um, in camp and ever since then took off from there. Yeah, and I mean, one of the best teams that you were on, man, Albany's deepest playoff run. Y'all went all the way to the second round, made a made a great run. It was a nine-win season for Albany. What made that team different for you, and what was it like to make us to make that run in the FCS playoffs that year? Uh, what made that team different for me? I just feel like we had a team full of guys who the year, the previous years, the 2017 and 2018 were on the team. And we weren't doing so well. I feel like that team was just hungry. Like you could see it in late games, closing games, and they came to the point where we had to decide whether we were just gonna have the same type of season we had the two years ago, turn it around, win on a three game winning streak. We had a couple of those. We had two three game winning streaks throughout that season to keep our playoff hopes alive. Like that was a destined and hungry team. Obviously we're talented and everything, but every team I've been on here has had a lot of talent. So that was just a determined, very determined team. Yeah, and I mean, I've, I, we've had some FCS players on here, and the spring season was so unique for you guys, getting moved into you know a time of the year where you're usually prepping for the next season, or some guys are going to NFL draft prep. For you looking back, how tough was the spring season for the team as a whole, and how did you stay prepared in the spring or in, all throughout the fall not playing when you were supposed to? Uh, the spring season was extremely tough for us because we didn't we had there we didn't have any practices with and with any sort of like equipment in the in the whole 2020. Like we had a couple of like walkthrough type COVID restriction practices where we're like 
three, five feet away from each other. Just three of those the whole 2020. We didn't do any plays. We didn't do anything, any tackling, any hitting, blocking. So, like, that whole season was kind of like a reset for us as a program, kind of, in terms of practicing football. But we just tried to stay as much in shape as possible with the strength and conditioning program that we have. And me personally, I just try to do as much as I can just to keep my body loose and just work on stuff like flexibility and just maintaining my body to keep it as strong as I can for the uh, spring season that happened and then the following fall that just finished. Right. And, I mean, this year you guys had a tough start, but, man, you guys had the – I think y'all might have had the most brutal schedule in all of FCS football with North Dakota State, Villanova, Delaware. I mean, James Madison's in there. I mean, you guys had so many of the top ten teams on the first half of your schedule, but you rail off two out of the last three big wins to end the season. What were your takeaways from this season um, at Albany for you? Yeah, like you mentioned, we did start the season off with some tough opponents, which – we expected, like, we knew North Dakota State was going to be a hard game. We knew Syracuse was going to be a hard game. But then you see that Rhode Island came out, had a strong season, too. Like, it's always going to be tough playing to see a team, especially when you get them week two. So it was just a bunch of challenges at the beginning of the season and a bunch of new players playing. Let you just get used to the type of intensity that it takes to win a game in college football in general, not even just the CAA or the teams that are playing just in college football. And just uh, I feel like it was a good to end on a stronger note than we finished, than we started with, because that just builds on for next year. And those guys next year just have more confidence to play. Right. And I mean, for you, man, what were your takeaways on your performance and what grade would you give your season? Another first team all CAA, you know, award at the end of the season, one of the best running backs in the CAA. So what was your grade and takeaways on your season as a whole? I mean, I feel like I did everything I could and produced as much as I can. So I give myself an A, A for effort, of course, and just <laughs> my stat-wise, I feel like that's an A, too. I uh, didn't hit a 1,000 yards rushing. But I was like 40 some yards short, but overall I had about over, well over a 1,000 um, total. So and that's just the most touchdowns I've had in my career. So I feel like stat-wise, it was good performance. My performance was good. I give it an A. No, I, I like it. I, I, if anything lower than an A, man, I would have been like, man, you got to give yourself, like, <laughs> you got to be a little bit easier on yourself. But, you know, you mentioned it earlier, and it's the CAA, the Big Sky, and the Missouri Valley are always the three top conferences in FCS football. What is, you, you've kind of spoken on it a little bit, but how hard is the grind going? You can have James Madison one week, Villanova the next, Delaware the next. I mean, there's some really good teams in this conference. What is the grind like during the season? And grind is just a different challenge every week. Like, I feel like in those other conferences that the bottom teams don't really, like, compete with the top teams as much. Like, you they rarely see North Dakota State would get upset. Like, but in our conference, you can see JMU, Villanova every week fighting for their, la- for their life on a last-second drive. Like, we were in a seven-point game with Rhode Island. So, like, you never know in our conference what's going to happen top to bottom. It's just extremely tough, and every team does Every team is great at something, so it's a different challenge every week. Right. And, I mean, so your careers, you know, at Albany is coming to an end, entering the NFL draft. If you had to look back to that freshman all the way back coming out of high school in 2017, stepping onto Albany's campus, how is her, how has your game evolved over these years? Um, my game has evolved significantly over these couple of years, just extend, understanding the football game more and just being more of a student of the game than a player. I feel like I've developed way better hands than I had when I came in freshman year. I'm able to read the defense better in terms of uh, what I should do when linebackers or defensive backs and defensive ends do certain stuff on the field in terms of like reading the open gaps before the play sometimes or even during the play. I just feel like I've just understood the game way more. Right. And I mean, for you, man, what are your biggest strengths right now? So, I mean, you're going to the NFL draft. If a scout asks you, what what are you, what is the number one thing you're bringing to a team? What do you tell them? Um, my biggest strength right now is versatility. I'm a back that can be on the field first through fourth down, if need be, on punt. So, I feel like I'm a guy who can run the ball between the tackles, outside the tackles, catch the football, block a linebacker 
lead, block, whatever the offense needs a person to do. Not even just a running back, any player on offense. So I can do anything that that's no offensively. And my strength is my versatility. Right. I mean, is that something that you've really focused on in college? Because I think, you know, since you've been in college, we've really seen a shift in the in the NFL to you're going to you're going to have to catch. I mean, you see the Alvin Kamara's, you see Dalvin Cook get out there. Even Derrick Henry sometimes has to catch all the backfield. So for you, was was the evolution of the running back position something that you had to catch up with at Albany? Yeah, it was. And that was something that also changed when we switched offensive coordinators. Um, just kind of getting into more spread after my freshman year, more plays for running backs to get in space or just players in general to get in space, more RPO offense. So just doing different things like that. Yeah, I had to get used to the game, and I feel like it worked out good. Yeah, and I mean, one of the things I love talking to players about on the show is film study. So one, how much film do you watch leading into a game? And two, when you first turn the film on, what are the biggest things you look for when you're scouting a defense that you're going to be facing on Saturdays? I watch them daily up until the game, to be honest, on on Saturday when we play the team. So uh, I look for mainly just the tendencies and the defense and how they react to different formations that we run, because that's a big thing in football, too, just knowing what a defense is going to come out in based on your alignment information, just know um, who on their defense does what particularly well from the linebacker standpoint, just who, who the blitzer is going to come and blitz a certain way and who's their their weaker tackler and just stuff like that to so just try to get a little more of a feel of how supposed to run throughout the game and I just don't try to rely too much on film because defenses come up on Saturdays and switch things up. It's gotta be ready for you gotta be prepared for them to prepare for you. So just have to keep your eyes open and just be mindful throughout the game too. Yeah, I, I like how you mentioned, you know, you can watch as much film as you want, but those wrinkles are coming, especially when you face the <laughs> upper the upper teams in the FCS. But Looking at your game, man, what running backs do you watch on Sundays or try to emulate when you go out there to, to on Saturdays to play? Um, which running back do I try to emulate on Saturdays? I really try to be myself, but I can see a couple running backs that style I kind of, like I would say, okay, this is a guy like I want to run like. Like Al Kamara, you mentioned, that's a big running back that I always watch when the Saints play. Antonio Gibson for the uh, Redskins. I like the way he runs the ball and he is used in the pass game. And I used to really like Adrian Peterson when he was when he was with the Vikings and stuff. Really liked AP. But those are a couple of my favorite running backs to watch, especially yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of Antonio Gibson. When he was in Memphis, I don't think he got enough credit in terms of what he was doing as a pass catcher, playing slot, being a running back. He did everything. But for you, man, when you look at the running back position, what's most important, speed or vision for running back, if you had to pick one that you could have? If I pick one that I can have as a running back, I would pick vision because your vision can get you to a lot of things that your speed, man, you can you, – because everybody in the other – the defense is going to be fast too. So sometimes your speed may be fast, but, like, your vision doesn't lead you to get in there. But I would pick – I would pick vision. I like it. So we've I've, I've had some crazy pregame routines talked about on the show. I've, I've heard, you know, you've heard the Deion Sanders laying the uniform out for you. Do you have a pregame routine that you have to do before the game? Or are you just one of those guys that suits up? You're just going to go out there and play. No, nah, definitely uh, one of those guys that just suits up and get there and play. But like, I definitely have a couple of things that I, that I do, but I don't try to use it as a routine because I'm not very superstitious. So like um, I drink like a cup of tea before the game on game days and uh, get a massage for my trainer. One of our athletic trainers, they, I, get, I get a massage the day before the game and the day of the game. And other than that, really, like, I don't know, I, t I get taped as late as possible, like before I go on the field. Like I don't get that. I, I don't have tape on during pregame. So I get taped as late as possible and I put on my turf tape like right before we go out. So I guess those are a couple of my routines. No, I like it. Hey, I like it. I like I like how you just keep it simple, man. I do. But for you, look at yeah. when you see when, when you're when you're in the game, what's one mistake? And you could just pick a linebacker since that's really your main matchup. What's one mistake a linebacker can make against you if y'all are one on one in the open field? Um, one mistake is stopping his feet. Because if you stop your feet, they're gonna run around you or through you. 
and just that's just a bad mistake to make me try to tackle a back like me. <laughs> EC said you could test me if you want the open field, but it is it, it's, it's not going to happen. I've seen the highlights, man. There's too many times where you have done exactly that. But the running back spot is different. I know. I know. Listen, DBs are notorious for trash talking. D linemen are the worst trash talkers as well. But for <laughs> you, do you talk a lot of trash during the game, or are you just like I'm going to get back to the huddle and I'll see you on the next play? Uh, it. I, I I I would say I talk a lot of trash in the game. I toned it down this year a little bit because it's my senior year. Like I kind of older, grown from that. But normally I'm I'm going, I'm going to talk trash on the field, especially if we're winning, and even if we're losing. Like depending, I just I, I'm a competitor, so I just like letting people know sometimes what's going on. Uh, I like it. Hey, I, you got to let them know. I mean, I've had too many DBs come on here and say, no one talks trash back to me and all this. So I'm glad someone's at least sticking up for the offense, man. But for, for, yeah, for you, you got to. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, man. But who's the best defensive player you've ever faced in a game? You can go back to high school. It can be any year you've played at Albany. Who's the best defensive player you've ever seen in a game? Defensive player. I've played a lot of good defensive players. Some in the NFL now. Some in draft picks. Um, so I'm going to say the best defensive player I played in the game is probably the DN from Villanova right now, Malik Fisher. He was, he was a beast. Their linebacker is also pretty good too, number 43, but their D, he, the DN, he was one of the best players I've seen, like athletically for somebody that size, like he, he's a dog. Oh yeah, man. That Villanova defense all year, man, was just... I mean, that, that's why they were a seed in the playoffs, man. That, that team was so good this year. But for you, man, listen, you have all this, all the all the American awards. You've been the uh, – I believe you were named to the honor roll, too, for the CAA. I mean, you have all these things going for you. What keeps you motivated year in and year out despite all the accolades and success? Um, what keeps me motivated mainly is my end goal. My end goal is to play in the NFL, take care of my family, take care of my mom, take care of my dad and my brother. And so just the fact that how much work I've put in since high school, since I started playing football in general, just seeing that the end goal is there and attainable, just trying to stay focused every day, stay as humble as I can so I'll get to that goal. That's what keeps me motivated. Oh, man, I like it. So you're getting ready for the NFL draft, man, and I'm expecting to see you in these postseason games. I'm expecting to see you hopefully at the combine and definitely hear your name called on Sundays. But if an NFL franchise comes up to you, man, and asks why they should draft you, why sh why should they draft this running back out of Albany? What are they getting from you? What what do you tell the NFL franchise? Uh, again, the player that's completely dedicated to making the program better in any way, shape, or form possible. Even a versatile, hungry football player who's going to make the best of his ability on the field, whatever you ask him to do. You're going to somebody who cares about the game, who's a student of the game, who's just willing to learn and do anything to better himself and the team. But listen, I appreciate you coming on the show. I know you're busy getting ready for the NFL draft, and you just finished your season not too long ago. So for you, for you to give me some of your time, man, I am very thankful. But this is your time, man. Shout out any NIL things. Shout out your social media. Shout out anyone you want to give a shout out to. This time is yours to talk or shout out anything you want to. Um, just so everybody follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Playmaker. I'll just be keeping updates and stuff about how my career and life is going there. Other than that, no, I already had no shout outs. I, I, it's all good, man. Listen, I, I, keep it simple. But listen, guys, go follow Carl on Twitter. The bigger his social media brand gets, man, the better deals he'll get in the future, the more opportunities and things like that. And ultimately, all these interviews, man, are always to support the players. So make sure to run the run the views up, hit the like button, man. Leave any comments of any other questions you want Carl to see or any any anything you want to say, guys. So appreciate you, Carl, man. But guys. We'll have more content coming very, very soon. Shout out to Carl for coming on the show, man. Follow his NFL draft journey throughout this fall and the spring. But guys, for the Blue Bloods and Carl, we are out for right now. Mm -hmm.